Tamira, I had the same reaction that um, how could in my lifetime, in your lifetime, how could humanity appear to have forgotten what we know occurred so monstrously in history? What's been, what's been your reaction and that of your family as you watch this play out? Um, look, uh, as a son of uh, a grandson of a Holocaust survivor, this is a very personal, um, affecting moment in history. We really feel the anti-Semitism anti is rising uh, everywhere at the moment, and it's it's scaring the Jewish community in terms of their safety, even in Australia. Betty, tell me about um, your family member. I, I understand. Um, someone you love in Israel has been taken hostage. Um, what, what can you tell us? I got a phone, I got a text message from one of my cousins who lives in the southern part of Israel to say that Margalit has been abducted and is in Gaza. They didn't have any other information. I tried to uh, uh, ring Margalit. I tried her Facebook page. There is no answer. I rang other members of the family. They don't know exactly what happened. No one has been able to get in touch or give me any extra information. So there, there is almost sort of like disbelief mm -hmm. there. It, it, it's it, I, when I spoke to them yesterday, there was still this feeling of this isn't real, <laughs> you know. Uh, so I haven't really got any information at all, which makes it worse. What can you tell us about Margalit? Where, what was she doing? You know, did she have family? She, she is a 74-year-old um, woman who uh, was born in Israel, uh, worked uh, on the uh, kibbutz there. It's a, a grape-growing area, uh, brought up her family and kids. And, and she was a, a lovely f family member. She uh, um, was an, an, she is an artist, <laughs> and, and uh, we sort of saw her when we visited Israel every few years, every two or three years we, we, we go there. But uh, why would anyone want to kidnap a 73-year-old grandmother? I mean, it's just horrible. And, and what about your family? So um, the initial uh, raid that occurred on Saturday morning was centred around the uh, villages in the south of Israel. My uh, close family, my cousins, live in a place called En Abso. It's in the south of Israel. Um, my uh, cousin, who was uh, called up very early to say there's something going on, you need to go to the front gate of the uh, village, um, he very soon encountered... Um, unspecified but a large number of Hamas operatives that were there. They had uh, started to fire on him. He fired back. There was a gun battle that ensued. He was able to repel that entire Hamas uh, cell that was there trying to invade his particular village. By doing so, wow. that, that one village was the one that was spared out of all of them that wasn't overrun by Hamas. He sustained a bullet wound to his shoulder. When he was evacuated by his brother, my other cousin, who lives also at this same village, they were then ambushed by another cell that was operating in a very close by area. The car was covered in bullets. He sustained two further gunshots to his uh, buttocks, but he's, he was OK. They managed to then go back, retreat into the village, got first aid, and eventually, hours later, he got to hospital to to, you know, to be taken care of, but he's okay. I, I want just quickly, if you can, to me, people to understand that, you know, Israel's a, a small country of nine million people. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't have a massive standing army like the United States or, or elsewhere. And that over the last 48, 72 hours, when they've called in the reservists, the, the 400,000 reservists now, to literally go in the front line, we're talking about people who work in professions, uh, uh, young people, that, have, that are literally picking up machine guns, aren't they, now to defend their country? Absolutely. I mean, uh, with a country of 9 million people, 400,000 adult men, uh, mostly men, but uh, is, is a huge toll on the workforce, on everything. Essentially, Israel at the moment is in a state of war and therefore 
it's not operating as per normal. Mm. And all these people have dropped literally everything. Many of them have not even been asked to come. They've literally just gone, okay, there's a war. We've, we've, we've seen, we've heard. Mm. We are going to defend our nation with, all, with, with everything that we have. And irrespective of what their professional background is, as soon as they put that uniform on, it's about the country. I know you were feeling shock and anger and disbelief about what's happened, not just in Israel, but what you've seen here in Australia. I say this on behalf of the non-Jewish Australian population. So many of us, um, we are angered by what we've seen here in Australia too, and we are shamed by what, what has happened, and uh, we stand with you. So thank, thank you. you both for being thank here. You. Thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate it.